Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, lecture where we will be talking on sputtering. Now, in the last lecture we have what we have seen, we have seen physical vapor deposition in that we have discussed about thermal evaporation and EBM evaporation. In sputtering as I told you last time there are 4 types, so the first one is DC sputtering followed by RF sputtering followed by magnetron sputtering and the last one is the reactive sputtering. So, let us see, uh, if you see the uh, slide the uh, sputtering techniques as I told you uh, are broadly divided into 4 categories, uh, the targets are available in various shapes uh, example disc, toroid, plates etcetera. Uh, Unlike the uh, thermal evaporation where we will talk about the boat and the uh, spiral coils or basket, uh, in sputtering generally targets are of uh, disc tor uh, toroid or plates. Now, uh, how the sputtering works that an as an energetic ion strikes and generally we what we use, we use argon right. So, strikes the surface of material there are 4 possibilities, the first one would be that ions with very low energies may simply bounce back of the surface doing nothing. The second will be that at low energy that is less than 10 electron volts the ion can be absorbed in the surface generating heat. The third possibility is about 10 kilo uh, electron volts of energy the ion penetrates into material and many atomic layers spacings and that is ion implantation. But uh, between these two ranges both energy transfer mechanism occurs and the substrate atom or cluster of atoms will be ejected and when that is ejected from the surf, uh, surface of the of the uh, uh, surface of the material right then uh, it will get deposited onto the substrate. Uh, so, this additional energy that is provided is sputter uh, provides sputter atoms with additional surface mobility for improved step coverage related to the evaporation. So, the, the again the point is that if I use argon ions, argon ions will bombard get bombarded onto the material that is your source material and the atoms from the source material gets dislodged. When it gets dislodged it will de get deposited onto a substrate right substrate. Now, the advantage of this because it is like a dislodging of atoms right and not really evaporation the if I have a step coverage let us say if I have a step like this, this here the bombardment will occur uniformly everywhere. So, compared to the thermal evaporation where the step was not covered uniformly right the chances of better step coverage uh, are higher when we go for the sputtering. Right. So, the sputtering has advantage over thermal evaporation uh, like we can have a better step coverage. Okay. So, let us go to the next uh, slide. <coughs> so, what is sputtering yield? Right. So, sputtering yield or uh, given by S is number of sputter atoms by number of incident ions. How many atoms from the surface gas dislodged from the source gas dislodged on bombardment of the incident ions. So, that ratio is called the yield uh, and sputtering yield in particular and um, uh, it depends on several things. The first one is that is inversely proportional to the binding energy of the material right that is one thing. Second thing is that it is proportional to the square root of energy of ions. Third one is proportional to ion m if we say and target atom uh, atomic mass is uh, then we can say s is proportional to m and proportional to angle of incidence so, rate is proportional to incident angle. Finally, reduction in deposition pressure gives a better yield. So, uh, you can see sputter yield versus ion energy as you keep on increasing energy at certain point it increases then it reaches the saturation and then starts kind of degrading. Uh, generally, the angle of incidence uh, uh, is between the 60 in between 60 and 70 uh, degree uh, sputtering yield uh, and angle of incidence while the uh, pressure versus uh, uh, the sputtering yield if you see then at a lower pressure the sputtering yield is better as you increase the pressure the sputtering yield comes down. Right. So, these are the some of the important points that you need to remember while we talk about the sputtering system. What are those? That S is proportional inversely proportional to binding energy, S is proportional to the square root of energy of ions, S is proportional to the ion m or uh, that is and the target atom mask uh, and finally, uh, the rate is proportional to the incident angle and reduction in deposition pressure gives a better yield. 
Now, let us start with the first one uh, out of the four categories. The first one is a DC sputtering and the deposition rates depends on the pressure and DC voltage and we can see here there is a cathode, there is an anode, you apply a DC between two and then there is a ground shield, there is a water cooling mechanism. So, the, car, the targets gets cooled down and when there is a uh, uh, bombardment of the uh, ions onto this target right the uh, atoms has dislodged and start depositing on the substrate. You can either use this you can also put substrate here and cathode here in that case cathode will be negative substrate would be positive right that you already know. The point is that at lower pressure the cathode sheet is wide and ions are produced far from the target and mean free path of the detached atoms that is lambda is inversely proportional to pressure that means if the pressure decreases lambda would increase right. Uh, as the pressure increases at a fixed voltage the mean free path is decreased more ions are generated but if the pressure is too high the sputter atoms undergo increased collision scattering and are not efficiently deposited. So, if it is too much high pressure the, the mean free path uh, would be less and uh, instead of uh, depositing onto the substrate it will just uh, collide with each other and forms the scattering. <coughs> that if there is a lot of scattering that means the deposition would not be uniform um, uh, and also efficient. So, the optimum condition is stated in the in the graph which is this graph right where how to have what should be the pressure range, what should be the current range and at what pressure you will have a typical sputtering conditions uh, where you have an optimum parameters so that you have a efficient deposition. Uh, in general deposition rate is proportional to the power consumed and inversely dependent on the electrode spacing right. So, uh, if the electrode spacing is reduced right the deposition rate is higher, if the electrode uh, uh, spacing is increased the deposition rate is lower, if the power is increased the deposition rate is higher, if power is decreased the deposition rate is lower. So, that is how the uh, combinations are there. Now, from DC sputtering if I want to go to RF sputtering then the RF sputtering helps to deposit insulating thin films. In DC sputtering uh, there is a difficulty of uh, uh, depositing the insulators, uh, but in RF you can very easily do that. So, films like silicon nitride, silicon dioxide you can use RF sputtering. In RF sputtering uh, the uh, so the what kind of insulating film? The insulating film where the resistivity is greater than 10 to the power 6 ohm centimeter. Right, you already know how the resistivity is calculated R equals to rho L by A, rho equals to R into A by L. When you put the units you have rho equals to ohm centimeter right that is the unit of the resistivity which is given here. Hmm. So, Uh, now, RF frequency that means uh, AC signal about 50 kilohertz electron oscillating in the glow region acquire enough energy to cause ionizing collisions reducing the need for secondary electrons to sustain the discharge. Secondly, the RF voltage can be coupled through any kind of impedance so, the electrodes need not to be the conductors. So, uh, this is advantage uh, because uh, as you know this uh, that the RF voltages can couple through any kind of the uh, impedance. Uh, so, it is possible to sputter any material irrespective of its uh, resistivity. If you want to uh, sputter metals you can go for DC sputtering, if you want to go for insulators uh, it is better to have RF because the, uh, the, the, the RF voltages can be coupled through any kind of insulating material particularly uh, any kind of impedance. So, typical RF frequency employed is about 13.56 megahertz that has been reserved for plasma processing uh, by FCC. Uh, and in RF sputtering the target self biases to a negative potential and positive ion bombard sputters away atoms for subsequent deposition. Uh, as you can see here is a substrate and uh, substrate is generally temperature cooled, there, there is an effect of temperature cooling and temperature heating ok. So, heating the substrate has an advantage, cooling has an advantage. So, uh, depending again on the what kind of application you are looking at uh, because certain times uh, you heat the substrate at certain temperature you will have a better uh, polycrystalline films. Uh, um, uh, but for now just understand that this temp this uh, target is cooled uh, uh, at a certain temperature uh, is kept cooled at certain, uh, certain temperature and uh, as the target is capacitively coupled to the RF generator metal as well as insulators can be easily deposited. So, that is the advantage of using RF frequency sputtering or RF sputtering. Now, what happens if you want to improve the rate of deposition right uh, and um, also the uh, if we add the magnet what will happen 
right. So, there is something called magnetron sputtering and in magnetron sputtering a magnetic field of strength B is superimposed uh, on the electric field E between target and substrate right. So, between anode and cathode the magnetic field B is superimposed on the electric field E. So, if that happens what will uh, what will occur? The electrons with the dual field environment experiences Lorentz force and we all know how the Lorentz force is given right uh, in addition to the equal uh, electric field force. So, if when we say that F equals to m dv by dt is equal to minus q into epsilon plus uh, v into b where q m and u are the electron charge mass and velocity uh, respectively right. So, uh, uh, this is how the uh, effect of a simple superimposing the magnetic field or electric field will uh, be there on the electrons. But let us take an example. So, it becomes more easier ok. You have three cases A here B and C. First we will talk about A followed by B and C. So, you see here uh, let us consider uh, the case where B and uh, electric field. So, magnetic field and electric field are parallel as in figure A like here ok. Now, what will happen? When the electrons are emitted exactly normal to the target ok, exactly normal to the target uh, and the parallel to both the fields like in this case, then V into B right. So, uh, electric field here electric field velocity magnetic field right. So, we have V into B is 0 electrons are only influenced by the electric field correct when this, this is the case. But if you consider the next case which is figure B where the electric field is neglected, but magnetic field is still applied as shown in figure B. In that case what will happen? The electron is launched from the cathode with a velocity v right, with a velocity v at an angle of theta with respect to B and it experiences force q v b sin theta in a direction perpendicular to B is not it correct. So, uh, we will have this uh, uh, force that is experienced uh, by the electron and the electron now orbits in a circular motion with a radius r right uh, that is determined by balance of centrifugal m into uh, v sin theta whole square by r and Lorentz force is involved r equals to m v sin theta by q b. The electron motion is helical with a constant velocity v right. So, instead of going straight now it will be like in this form the electron will move further. So, if the, uh, uh, the and then that, that will be constant with what with a velocity v cos theta is not it. So, uh, the when when the electron motion is helical and uh, with a constant velocity v theta v cos theta because now we are considering only magnetic field to be present and electric field to be uh, absent. So, if the magnetic field were not present such off axis electrons would tend to migrate out of the discharge and will be lost at the walls right. So, that is the reason of having this one. Now, uh, going further the motion of electrons uh, is helical with a constant radius, but because of electron acceleration in the E field that is electric field the pitch of helix lengthens with time. So, time varying electric fields helps in varying the radius of spiral electrons right. So, if you have time varying electric field then you can change the radius of the uh, you know helix. Uh, uh, and, and the length length and the length of the helix can also be changed uh, uh, if you have the time varying electric field. The magnetic fields prolong the electron residence time in plasma. So, there is an advantage one is that you can increase the pitch of the helix lens by uh, uh, what you call uh, with time right the acceleration of electric field but you can also kind of control it by time varying electric fields. But the advantage of magnet here is that the electron residence time would increase in the plasma. If that occurs that means the probability of ion collisions will increase and in that results in increased deposition rate right that is advantage. So, if the, the, the electron presents more time in this plasma then the uh, uh, more collisions uh, would occur and collisions to the target which will result in bone bombardment resulting in a higher deposition rate. Uh, so, applying elect magnetic field have the desirable effect of reducing electron bombardment of the substrate and extending the operating vacuum range. Uh, thus, when you want to increase the rate of deposition you know you can go for magnetron sputtering. Now, let us come to the last one which is the reactive sputtering 
and in reactive sputtering uh, thin films of compounds are deposited on the substrate by sputtering using metallic targets in the presence of reactive gas in chamber. Usually mixed with the inert gas uh, invariably the argon uh, to tune the partial pressure. So, the most common compounds reactively sputtered are oxides uh, in the presence of oxygen, nitrides, nitrogen and ammonia, carbides, methane, acetylene, propane, sulphides, oxycarbides and oxynitrides. So, there are several materials which we can deposit uh, which can we can deposit with the help of reactive sputtering. Irrespective of which of this material is considered du during reactive sputtering the resulting film is either solid solution alloy of the target metal dip doped with reactive element a compound or some mixture of two right. So, uh, that is how the reactive sputtering is used. Uh, uh, now, we if we apply a bias in the bias sputtering uh, the electric field near the substrates are modified in order to vary the flux and uh, energy of incident charge species and this is achieved by applying either a negative DC or RF bias to the substrate. So, uh, if you keep the target voltage around minus 1000 to minus 3000 volts and bias voltage about minus 50 to minus 100 volts um, uh, then you can have uh, uh, a better uh, uh, sputtering and due to the exchange uh, charge exchange processes in anode dark space very few discharge ions strike the substrate with full bias voltage. The technique has been utilized in all sputtering configuration whether it is DC, RF, magnetron and reactive to alter broad range of properties in the depositor film. Uh, by changing this bias voltage you can have properties of the film changed and um, uh, again when we go for the material characterization the uh, material science right you need to change the properties of the film and that could be changed by the effect of the bias. The technique uh, further helps to tune resistance activity, stress, direct properties, optical properties, edge rate, density, uh, addition of the depositor film. So, uh, just not uh, only the deposition, but also how to change the uh, properties of the material right. Whether it is a dielectric property or it is an optical property or whether it is improving the edge rate or increasing the resistivity all this can be tuned with the help of these parameters right. So, that is the advantage of uh, uh, bias sputtering uh, as you see in the slide uh, uh, this is a uh, more clear image of uh, how the plasma is needed to make the gas conductive and generator ions can then be accelerated to the strike the target right. You can see here the target is here and the argon ions are uh, bombarding and the target terms um, are dislodging right uh, and then forming the uh, film on the substrate. So, higher pressures than evaporation about 1 to 100 millitor uh, better at depositing alloys and compounds than evaporation. In evaporation you can uh, still deposit alloy, uh, but uh, sputtering is better uh, compared to uh, the evaporation techniques. So, now if you see the schematic right sputtering system looks much more complicated. Uh, we will show you the actual sputtering system that we have in the lab and how you can sputter a material. Again you have window to look at the sputtering uh, source and target both you can see through same window uh, depending again on the type of sputtering unit that you buy. Uh, and uh, this is done generally in the vacuum chamber about 10 millitor uh, the plasma is generated by applying RF signal producing energy energetic ions if it is RF sputtering uh, and usually the target is bombarded by this ion that is with argon's ions. Argon is a gas that is used in sputtering. Uh, the ion knocks the atom from the target and sputtered atoms are transported to the substrate. We are, we are talking these things many many times right so that we do not forget that this is the mechanism by which the sputtering can be used right. Wide variety of materials can be deposited uh, uh, because the material is put into vapor phase by mechanical rather than this is extremely important important right. Sputtering is a mechanical way of depositing film rather than a chemical or thermal it is not part of chemical vapor deposition neither it is part of thermal evaporation because in thermal evaporation we were melting it and then we were depositing it. In sputtering we are not doing that same right. So, that is the reason that it is called a mechanical way of depositing the film. Excellent step coverage is an advantage of the sharp topologies because of a higher chamber pressure causing larger number of scattering events film stress can be controlled to some degree by chamber pressure and RF power right. So, the stress can be also controlled uh, by using these parameters. So, if you want to see uh, uh, in, in a glance right uh, the sputtering process then sputtering process can be run in DC or RF mode 
the insulator must be run in RF mode it is important. Then what is the second thing the major parameter process or process parameters are one operation pressure 1 to 100 milliliter second the power it should be few than 100 watts. Uh, we can also change the power actually in sputtering from 100 to 200 to 300 uh, watts and uh, again depending on the power right the rate of deposition would change as I told earlier if you increase the power the rate of deposition increases if you increase the distance between source and target the rate of deposition decreases if you decrease the power rate of deposition decreases if you decrease the distance between source and target the rate of deposition increases. Um, for DC sputtering the voltage is between minus 2 to minus 5 kilo volts additional substrate bias voltage uh, we can we can apply substrate temperature is about 20 to 700 degree centigrade that is why sometimes you have to cool the substrate uh, in addition to IC industry a wide range of industrial products use sputtering for example for LCD liquid display computer hard drives hard coatings for tools metals on plastics all this re, uh, uses the uh, sputter films. Um, it is more widely used by industry than evaporator partially because uh, that for evaporation uh, there are very few parameters uh, rate and substrate temperature one can control to tailor film properties. Sputtering has the advantage that we can tailor the film properties as I have as we have seen in the previous slide. The step coverage is poor for the thermal evaporation it is better for sputtering it is not suitable for compound or alloy that is thermal evaporation is not suitable while sputtering is uh, just thermal not only thermal but e-beam also ok. Thermal when we say evaporation thermal and e-beam both are considered as a evaporation uh, uh, techniques. Considerable materials are deposited on chamber walls and wasted in case of uh, e-beam and thermal while in case of sputtering the wastage is comparatively lower. So, now if you want to compare sputtering itself uh, by advantages and disadvantages or advantages and limitations what are advantages first let us go to advantages larger size targets simplifying the deposition of thins uh, uh, with uniform thickness over large wafers that is first advantage uh, advantage one then second is film thickness can be easily controlled by fixing the operating parameters and simply ap ap uh, adjusting the deposition rate. So, parameter advantage number two uh, control of the alloy composition step coverage grain structure is easier. So, that is step number 3 sputter cleaning of the substrate in vacuum prior to film deposition is possible that is a very big advantage because then none of the uh, material that was present earlier right uh, will still be there we can just clean the, uh, uh, the chamber right before we start a new deposition. So, the advantage number 4 finally the de device damage from x-ray generated by electron beam operation is avoided this is very important again because E beam will cause the excess to generate which will actually deteriorate the film ok. So, uh, uh, compared to E beam sputtering is better in, in this uh, area, but then what are the disadvantages the first one is the high capital expense right. So, first one is high capital expense second rate of deposition of some material is extremely low like silicon dioxide right we use RF for insulating right materials. Some materials such as organic solids are easily degraded by ionic bombardment this is important parameters parameter number 3 right uh, that is a disadvantage and the last will be the greater probability to introduce impurities in the substrate because former operates under high pressure. This is also very important thing that when we, we are using sputtering compared to the and uh, compared to the E beam or thermal evaporation. So, let us see the next slide. So, if you want to have uh, the PVD advantages and limitations then the first advantage over CVD we are talking about PVD versus CVD now of course, we have not seen uh, the uh, CVD in detail we will see it in the next lecture. For now if you just quickly want to want to just uh, you know understand advantages versus limitation then higher deposition rates compared to CVD techniques no harmful exhaust so safer than CVD tools. In CVD the, by, the byproducts are some harmful gases which has to be treated before you uh, send to the exhaust. Uh, while the limitation is that uniformity is not good as CVD, CVD has an excellent uniformity a beautiful step coverage, um, uh, but uh, the step coverage uh, uh, is poor compared to CVD, uh, CVD has a better step coverage compared to the PVD that is what I said that uniformity is better and step coverage is better in case of CVD. However, the higher deposition rates uh, uh, is uh, advantage of PVD and no harmful gas is advantage of the PVD techniques. 
So, in a way if you want to see the last uh, slide and understand how we can compare two different techniques evaporation and sputtering and then we will see the summary of it. Okay. So, first is if you want to compare the rate, rate at which the film is deposited or film is formed. So, the atomic thousands atomic layers per second 0.5 micron per minute it is super fast right and is one atomic layer per second. So, the quality is better this is faster. Second one uh, is choice of material. So, in evaporation we have limited, but in sputtering almost unlimited we can sputter almost every material. Third one is a purity right there is a better because no uh, gas inclusions very high vacuum, but in the case of sputtering the vacuum is low or medium range and that is why the purity may not a, a be as good as the evaporation. Substrate heating is very low unless magnetron is used uh, substrate heating can be substantial if magnetron is used substrate heating will be comparatively lower. Surface damage, there is a surface damage in the case of E beam because of the generation of X ray. Here, the ion bombardment may damage the uh, surface, otherwise, there is no generation of X ray. Uh, in situ cleaning, it is not possible in case of evaporation, but in case of sputtering, uh, you can clean the chamber by uh, sputtering uh, uh, with the sputtering uh, itself. Uh, so, uh, that can be done. Uh, next one is alloy composition and stoichiometry. So, there is little or no control because it is so fast the atoms will not have time to rearrange itself, but in case of sputtering alloy composition can be tightly controlled. Uh, the next one is x-ray damage like I said only with E beam patient x-rays are generated, uh, but radiation and particle damage is possible. However, x-ray is not really an issue uh, because it is not generated in sputtering. Uh, also, uh, the, the radiation and particle damage uh, may be one of the issues, but really not from the uh, X-ray that is generated in case of E-beam. Uh, changes in source material, it is easy for evaporation, you just have to load another material. In case of sputtering, it is a disk, so you have to change the disk with a new disk uh, of that particular uh, source. Uh, the scaling up of the system, evaporation is very difficult, um, uh, is, is comparatively easier, uh, while for sputtering it is uh, low. Uh, I am sorry. So, when we talk about scaling up means uh, 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 to, to have uh, uh, bigger substrate and, and other things right. Uh, for sputtering it is really good, but in case of the evaporation it is uh, very difficult okay, to scale up the system. Uh, when it comes to uniformity again the evaporation system is difficult, uh, while the uniformity of the film in case of sputtering will be better, because the sputtering is a mechanical way of depositing the atoms onto the target uh, by dislodging the atoms using the ions and these ions are from the argon. So, the capital uniformity we talked about capital equipment cost is so, the cost of evaporation is lower compared to uh, sputtering. Number of depositions uh, you can have only one depositions per charge, you can have many depositions can be carried out per target. Uh, uh, there is another thing that you need to understand because uh, once you use the material, you have to use the next material in case of evaporation, so only one deposition is, is used. Here is a disk, so you can use multiple evaporation, uh, whatever material you use, you can keep on using the same uh, disk for longer time. Uh, thickness control is not so easy, several controls are possible in case of sputtering, uh, not so easy in case of evaporation. Uh, addition is often poor, while in sputtering it is really good. Uh, the shadowing effect is large while it in this case of sputtering is small, but if you compare CVD compared to this PVD then the shadowing effect is also comparatively poor and the uniformity is larger. Uh, the step coverage is better in CVD compared to PVD, but the step coverage of this evo sputtering system is better than the evaporation system. Finally, uh, when it comes to pro film properties like grain size and step coverage difficult to control, you can control by bias pressure and substrate heat in case of the uh, spotting. So, <coughs> if you want to summarize uh, about the physical vapor deposition, then we can summarize in this particular paragraph that the physical vapor deposition technique is based on the formation of vapor of the material to be deposited as a thin film, right. The material in solid form is either heated until evaporation, that is thermal evaporation or E beam or sputtered by ions which is called we call sputtering. Hmm. Sputtering is seems to be like a raindrop on the metal roof right. If you have ever heard the raindrops falling on the metal roof that is how this sputtering sounds like right that is called sputter. In sputtering we have the ions are generated by the plasma discharge usually with an inert gas that is argon 
and it is also possible to bombard the sample with an ion beam from an external ion source. This allows the to vary the energy and intensity of ions reaching that particular uh, material. So, uh, the uh, advantages of the sputtering are there over thermal deoperation and E beam deoperation. However, when we talk in general about PVD versus CVD, the CVD has a better step coverage compared to sputtering, CVD is more uniform compared to sputtering, sputtering and EBM operation and thermal operation are faster right uh, there are no residual gases, in CVD there are residual gases. So, the next part of what we need to understand is how and when we can use chemical vapor deposition and why we should use it right. So, uh, the next set of lectures will consist of uh, chemical vapor deposition whether it is LP CVD or it is atmospheric pressure CVD or it is plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition and for where exactly we can use. So, there is a P CVD where we can uh, dip, we can grow uh, or we can deposit uh, with the chemicals uh, silicon dioxide, but the quality of that silicon dioxide is it as good as the uh, thermal oxidation and uh, where exactly if the quality is not good we can use P E C V D instead of thermal oxidation was an advantage of P E C V D over thermal oxidation. So, this all things are very important why it is important because when we are going to fabricate a device you should insulate certain material uh, uh, you know like for example, there is a metal layer you need to insulate with some silicon dioxide or silicon nitride insulator then you have to use uh, low temperature uh, method to deposit this kind of insulating film, but thermal oxidation as we know is about 900 to 1100 degree centigrade. So, we cannot use it in case in, in that particular uh, case what alternative methods are available. So, CVD will help us or uh, will rescue us when we go for uh, such kind of application we will we'll see when we look at the device fabrication in detail. So, till then uh, look into this particular uh, lecture and understand the sputtering little bit about sputtering right again we are not going into that because our idea is to understand the equipment, understand the techniques and then use it for fabrication and that also we are not there right fabrication and use it for implants implantation when implantation in the brain and you collect the signals and you understand and you apply electrical simulation and you further understand how the signals are generating and how it can be useful. So, these are all the steps to go uh, once or uh, one, one, one objective you can say among several interrelated objectives right uh, to achieve our final goal of understanding how to acquire the signals from the brain, how to apply electrical simulation to the brain. So, uh, till then I will see you in the next class, uh, have a nice day, nice time from wherever you are uh, attending this NPTEL course, uh, cheers.